We go to the bottom of the 10th inning. Mets down 9 7. Cleveland hit a two run home run in the top of the extra inning. Gabriel Arias into right center. And now the Mets send up Marte, Vientos, and Canna against Emmanuel Class A, who is the Cleveland closer. He leads the league with 15 saves already. That's a quarter of the, the games that have been played. And he's actually collected so many saves that he's blown four of them, too. So. Got a guy like David Robertson for the Mets, who's 8 for 8. Hasn't blown any saves. And then you have Class A, who is 15 for 19 already. Throws a 99-mile-an-hour cutter, a 91-mile-an-hour slider, and a 99-mile-an-hour fastball. And Brett, your point is? <laughs> <laughs> There's a chance. Here's Marte. First pitch. Runner at second. And 98. Missed inside. Ball one. He has given up one home run. Four other extra base hits. Marte and then Vientos. Mets down by two. The 1-0. Marte spanks one in the sky. Right center field. Straw and Brennan come together. Brennan the right fielder. Shy of the track. Makes the catch in deep right. Beatty tagging and heading for third. And he's there standing up as the throw goes into second base. So Marte flies out. Now remember, Cleveland scored twice in that uh, top of the 10th. So the Mets need not just Beatty but somebody else to keep the game alive. Well, looks like uh, it's Vogelback has come out on deck right now to bat for Canna with Vientos in the batter's box at the moment. Righty against righty. Class A kicks, comes home. Ground ball up the middle base, hits center field. Vientos puts one up the gut, and Beatty scores some third. It is 9-8. Mets are not done yet. Beatty pointing at his buddy, Mark Vientos, as he goes back to the first base dugout. RBI single and the second hit up here for Vientos since the call-up from AAA on Wednesday. Oh, all right. You've already called one dramatic walk-off <laughs> this week. You got your walk-off call ready to go just in case? Uh, maybe. Maybe. People are certainly rioting for their man, but... No, no, no. <laughs> Come here's, on, man. Here's Eduardo Escobar, who's... Pinch running for Vientos. This is your time, man. Embrace it. <laughs> well, Run it. with it. Speaking of runner, again, it's Escobar at first base. He is the most important man in the building. Daniel Vogelback pinch hitting for Mark Canna. The lefty against the righty, Emmanuel Classe. 9-8 Cleveland, bottom of the 10th inning. One on, one out. Pitch to Vogelback. Missed outside with a cutter that came in at a cool 100 miles an hour. One thing they don't want here from Vogelback is for him to hit the ball on the ground. Open stance left side. The 1-0 on the inside corner called a strike. That was a slider at 92. Some unfair stuff. From Emmanuel Class A, who interestingly enough is not a huge strikeout pitcher. This gets pretty weak contact. One and one on Vogel back. Escobar takes off. Pitch taken for a strike. Throw down to second base. Bounces into center field. Escobar to his feet, but he hangs on as Straw backs up the play in the grass. Well, that changes the equation completely now, doesn't it? Escobar was on the move and steals the base. That's sponsored by Duncan. The Mets run on Duncan and as that ball was being sent down to second base by Cam Gallagher the catcher it was going to be close but it bounced through Rosario's attempted grab tying run in scoring position one out the one two swing and a miss Vogel back put away on the slider so he pinch hits and strikes out and the Mets are down to their final out and Francisco Alvarez who has homer tonight he, of course, tied the game on Wednesday in the ninth inning with a, a home run. Slowly struts to the righty batter's box. Cleveland nine. New York eight. And as Alvarez gets there, here comes Cam Gallagher, the catcher. was joined by Arias, the first baseman, to talk this over. Now, having watched Alvarez for many, many a year down in the minor leagues, and I'm sure Mets fans have started to pick up on this as well, Alvarez lives for these moments, moments that he knows. Saw after that celebration in the ninth inning the other night, 
And he wants it. He feeds off the crowd's energy. He had a bat flip the other day that he sent to the roof, but he flipped it as the crowd erupted. He plays to these fans. He wants to put on a show for them. And he digs in. Gallagher back in his crouch behind the plate. 9-8 Cleveland, tying run at second. Tenth inning, two outs. First pitch. Crack foul back and out of play down the first baseline. Strike one. He also has a big swing, as we know. And the equation here is that, yeah, a home run would win the game, but a little dunker into center field would also tie it and keep it going. So Alvarez cannot overreact to a pitch that he might not be able to yank. Escobar at second. Here's the 0-1. Strike two. Outside corner, a slider at 91. It was over. And it's nothing in two on Alvarez. And now Classe can really have a little fun outside the zone here, which is a place where Alvarez often goes. Classe set, looking for the last strike to get Cleveland a win. Pitch. Bouncing ball to third. Ramirez dives to his left. It's by him. Base hit. Escobar rounds third. The throw home is high. Escobar slides in head first. Alvarez at second. He's tied the game. It's 9-9 in the bottom of the 10th inning. RBI single beyond a diving Jose Ramirez to his left. And Escobar, the pinch runner, scores from second base. The winning run now at second base. Well, we've seen some stuff here the last few days, have we not? Now there is magic and emotion back in the building. You can feel it with these fans who are on their feet. They want nothing more than a dub. So now it's Nimmo with the winning run at second base and two outs. Pitch. Strike. Top of the zone with a fastball at 101. Classe leans in for the sign. Now straightens. The kick in the 0-1. Swing and a foul at home plate. Got a piece of the catcher Gallagher. It's a 99-mile-an-hour cutter, and as it redirected off Nimmo's bat, there is bare open hand. That is not a fun feeling. I can see it trembling and vibrating from up here. And here comes the training staff. Got a look at the monitor. Gallagher's hand is resting on his thigh, and it caught him right in the pocket between the thumb and the first finger. And the webbing. And immediately went down. So Class A had thrown two strikes, and this might ice him a little bit. Nimmo gets a chance to really think about things. Well, first of all, the Mets have extended the game. There will be an 11th inning, even if the Mets do not score here. It is 9-9 with two outs in the bottom of the 10th. Mark Vientos, the RBI single to bring in Beatty to make it 9-8, and then down to their final strike. The Mets from Francisco Alvarez's bouncing ball through the left side have tied the game. Alvarez went to second base on the error. And they're still tending to Gallagher here. Yeah, and while they do, I think a lot of attention should be paid to the totality of Francisco Alvarez's evening. The obvious stuff, the home run and the game-tying single, the latter of which just came in this 10th inning. But we've talked all night about how effective he's been dealing with pitches in the dirt and keeping almost all of them within reach, save for one wild pitch that came up high on his shoulder and bounded too far away. But he's been getting quite a workout back there from his pitchers tonight, and he's done a real good job in occasionally preventing guardian runners from getting extra bases on balls in the dirt. So Gallagher going to stay in the game. Francona and the trainer back in the dugout. It's 0-2 on Nimmo with two outs. Alvarez at second. Pitch. Bouncing ball the other way towards short. Rosario to his right. Fields. Awkward throw to first. It's not in time. Nimmo is safe. Alvarez gets to third and stops right there. Arias was pulled off the bag. Rosario, the shortstop, went to his right to field it. He's going one way with his momentum, trying to throw back the other way off one foot. It never got there in time. It's an infield hit for Nimmo. And the winning run is 90 feet away. That's Alvarez. Yeah. And look who's up. And what's the storyline? Where was the crowd of reporters before the game today? In whose locker? The man in the batter's box. Francisco Lindor with the game on the line. First pitch. Ripped up the middle. Base hit center field. Alvarez scores. The Mets win the game. 10-9. Francisco Lindor. He's a New York Met. 
getting mobbed at first base. Another extra innings thriller. Oh, Flushing is on fire this week. Lindor getting chewed up by bodies of black uniforms near first base. He's in there with a pile. So is Alvarez, who's getting his head pat like a drum by Starling Marte. Lindor with that big, bright, fresh smile. The Mets have done it again. A 10-9 winner in 10 innings. I don't know. Maybe it's like asking a parent who his or her favorite <laughs> child is, but... The Mets might have outdone themselves after the heroics of just a couple of nights ago here when they came back with three late home runs to beat the Tampa Bay Rays. But how about the way it ends with Francisco Lindor, the former Cleveland Indian, now, of course, facing them as the Guardians, delivering the game-winning hit after the kids came through once again. So a 10-9 winner. Lindor catching a fastball in, wasting no time. Class A blowing his fifth save. And as soon as Lindor saw that ball sneak by Jimenez, diving to his right, he was barking out and loving it. And Alvarez flings the helmet into the sky. The Mets with their largest comeback win this year. <laughs> they were down 5 nothing. not going to say the ship was sunk. But you go back a week or two weeks ago, it would have felt like the ship has sunk. And this Mets team, Howie, has been electric. Yeah, well, you know, we talked about the comeback win two nights ago as being a potential springboard and how those things would define themselves in the days and weeks to come. Well, the early returns are pretty promising, right? They won a good game yesterday, a one-run game against, again, the team with the best record in baseball, the Tampa Bay Rays. And then tonight, to come back from down five runs early, midway, and then four later, and win this game the way they did with the door of all people getting the game-winning hit, just to once again summarize the dramatic aspect of the way it unfolded. As, as I say, those early returns in terms of feeding off the momentum created the other night are very encouraging. So the Mets win at 10-9. to We'll come back and revisit how they did it. Right after this on the WCBS Mets Radio Network, driven by your Tri-Honda dealers.